got my big song team, got over 20 girls in. Like that, hey, hey. A few things I want to talk about push for rung just to get them clear out of the open. Number one, I strained my hamstring. It's not his fault. It's a programming error, which we probably shouldn't have done 100 meters. We probably should have done 60 and built up. Agreed? And warmed up. Agre That's true and too. Chris can talk, because it's Chris' program. Chris can talk about the breakdown and how, how we're going to attack it. So Chris, I'll leave it with you. Johnny, come over here, get around here, get over here. Obviously we started with about nine weeks to build up to that push-pull run. So I'm always big on eccentric, isometric, concentric work. So always block one, high eccentric. What I love about it is it really, it builds your base, it builds capacity, it teaches you how to absorb everything, really build strength without the actual loading there. So you don't have to worry about, you know, going super heavy or peaking too quickly because the eccentric, the tempo is gonna take that away, but it's gonna really build your base and nail strength in different ranges of motion. Then we move on to an isometric block. This is where I create pauses in really disadvantageous positions. Think about it, in a bench at that bottom range through there. If you're gonna hold it there, hold tension through it there and then push up from a dead stop, it's gonna build your strength. So we're really focusing, rather than just peak loading for the complete nine weeks, on building his base ability to control correctly, his ability to hold in disadvantageous positions, and then that concentric block is all about upping the load. Some people do just concentric only, but for me and for this block, we're keeping it specific to the actual exercise where it's gonna be a complete range of motion. Again, it's just increase the loading. Eccentric, take it down slow, isometric, pause in that disadvantageous position, concentric, push heavy low. This is where we do things like five, three, one, where we're actually doing a wave, a breakdown of reps, right? If Bang Energy are watching this, I want a sponsorship. If you, we're not hanging unless we're banging, Bang Energy the best in the business. Love it. Um, and that concentric, so five, three, one, right, where we get to build on- And a, fuck you, Charlie Anastasios. I'm gonna fucking beat the fucking shit out of you, motherfucker. All you motherfuckers are powerlifters, that's fine, I'm the running to beat the shit out of you. I like you, Jamie Bootsiotis, because I like Bootsiotis because of, of our family. Donnie's in our family. You keep calling me fucking old, I'm fucking sick of it. It's firing me up. Seven weeks to go, fucking Charlie, you motherfucker. I'm coming after you. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you at the push pull run. Beat the shit out of you. Dirk, say it to him. We're gonna beat the shit out of you. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, Charlie. Now, concentric, 531. I love 531 method because it allows the individual to build up to a high intensity, a heavy single without extreme fatigue. It's not like they're sitting there doing a one RM, they're doing three sets of one or four sets of one. It allows them to effectively build up to it, a five, a three, and a one. And then each week, whatever you did for one, or each, every couple weeks, whatever you do for one, you should be able to do for three. Whatever you do for three, you should be able to do for five over time. Maybe not every week, but every couple of weeks. So it creates a really good progressive approach. Then we taper off for one week and then we fucking go out there and kill it. That's the program, that's the method. Let's go see Woody fucking train and absolutely dominate. So a lot of people just look at like, you know, strength training is, yeah, just fucking put load on there. Woody's actually prioritizing mobility, a huge component, keeping his body free and healthy. People don't understand if Woody's fucking injured or someone's injured, he can't even fucking compete. So this isn't just for powerlifters, this is for everyone. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, Charlie. And Borzilla, you shut your mouth, Borzilla, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you too. I actually really like them both. But fuck you, Charlie, you <laughs> don't. I love all of them, I love Borz. They're all good guys, but seriously, fuck you, Charlie. <laughs> Anyone yep, put the heart. You can have a big tick out though, you don't have hamstrings at work. Oh, oh, okay. I might not have two working hamstrings and I might be older than you. But one thing I do have on my side is TRT. I've got more testosterone than you'll ever have because I'm on TRT. Number two, I have more heart than any of you motherfuckers. Dirk even admitted to me, on the day, you're gonna pull something out of your ass. I know the run, I'm gonna beat the shit out of him on the run. And then, on the deadlift, he's gonna beat the shit out of me. The bench, I've got no idea. What does he bench? 170. And he's gonna beat the shit out of me on bench too. I cannot lose to Jeremy. I'll tell you right now, I'll put my gym on it. If I lose to Jeremy, I'm never gonna train ever again. All right, so we're gonna do a reactive laying med ball pass. So important to understand that the upper body does utilize the stretch order. So yes, not as much as the lower body, but it's important for the upper body to understand how to take in force quickly and re-express it concentrically as well. And one, Blunt. two, Blunt. three, Blunt. Oh, one more. Blunt. One more, come on, one more. One more. Ah. Any plyometric, whether it be upper or lower body, you don't want to be loosey goosey. Like tension. Tension. tension, tension, tension. One, Blunt. two, Blunt. three, Blunt. four, Blunt. come on, five, Blunt. you can progress any plyometric by actually increasing the altitude or the height. Right, so I can actually stand on a bench if I wanted to, or a small box, or a large box, right? 
and increase the drop. The greater the velocity of the drop, therefore the greater the eccentric. The more you have to take in. The more you have to take in the potential, potential to express more concentrically, or express more going back out, right? You need to train this because you need to teach the body how to take in more, right? And that's where eccentric training also really helps with that as well. So I'm, I'm hoping to bench. My PB on the bench is 130, so I want to hit 140, which is a big step. But I've got, uh, I've got the ace in the hole, Charlie. Baby, I've got the ace in the hole. He's a cheater. He's cheating. He's on testosterone. He's cheating. Yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> Just imagine, or imagine bench, imagine if I rock up and bench 230. Everyone be like, ah, uh, what? Be like, yeah, guys, 230. Donny, listen, right? The biggest thing is when people look at running, right? Like we're looking at the 1.6K, one mile, right? A lot of people think just run hard, run hard, run hard. Now, understand that when we look at capacity and actually building your ability to run for longer, run at a higher intensity, actually starts with going from a low level base where your heart rate's actually- We didn't actually start low level at all. Yes, we, we sprinted from the start. Uh, no, we did capacity and tempo. But we sprinted from the start. Not sprinted, capacity and tempo. Right? Wait, no, no, but we did, he told me to. Yeah. And I'm like, this is surely can't be right. And I did my hamstring. No, listen, <laughs> we did both. Four, three, two, one, and punch. Good, therefore, three, two, one, and punch. I've got 85, I'll be right with that. 85? Yeah. Now, I was saying, aerobic <laughs> capacity running, sub 160 heart rate, nasal breathing, if you can. I understand you can't do it for the whole time, but you've got to try and nasal breathe because you stimulate the parasympathetic response. Rest and digest, lower heart rate. And if you can actually improve your time at a lower heart rate, when you need to work at a higher intensity, you have more gas in the tank. Build the engine first, build your capacity. Don't worry about fucking intensity. If you're an athlete, right, and you've got time. Just to let everyone know, building aerobic adaptation is quite quick. I can get someone fit in about four weeks, yeah, I reckon. All right, six, let's hit it. Fuck you, Charlie. Four, three, two, one, punch. Four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, three, two, four, three, two, six. If I hit 140, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get naked. Look at this. Single arm, one arm row. Yep, then we got a peck fly. I've been doing incline peck fly. Incline peck fly. And then stop lying, external rotation. Yeah, done. Okay, so we've got a little tri-set here. Again, I love super setting, I love tri-setting. Great for fucking time efficiency. Single arm dumbbell row, really good because, again, build that back strength, right? We're doing a lot of pushing, it's important we kind of make sure we're in that pulling too, just to kind of keep our shoulders happy, especially wood shoulder. Peck fly, man, build more mass. More mass, potential to produce more force, right? Build that mass of that peck. Hopefully, over time, that size is gonna help them push a bit more. All right, and that laying dumbbell side external rotation again, just hitting the small stabilizer. Everyone thinks just big, 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 everything big, big, big. Don't forget about the smaller muscles, right? Now the smaller muscles, again, from there, you'll start to see it and your body's healthy. Again, if you can fucking train for 10 weeks straight well, you're probably gonna get more fucking adaptation than training hard one week and not training the next. Simple. So what I normally do to have a set up is, most people do it like an upright row. We wanna hinge. So the trunk is horizontal. So it's a horizontal pull through here. Remember, joint angle and body position dictate muscle recruitment. I train a neural pattern, nothing more, nothing less, all right? Ding, 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 ding. I'm a fucking idiot. Daddy wants this. See how he's breathing out as he pulls in, breathes out again. Creates more a greater relationship between the ribcage and the, the pelvis, and therefore, he's gonna create more range, more range, more muscle damage, more contraction, more hypertrophy. Notice how his elbow stays to his body. A lot of people sitting out there fucking flaring through here, rushing it quickly. Look at him, he's controlling and he's focusing on feeling it. Did uh, you feel it? Uh, exactly, he feels it. Right? Uh, he's focusing on the sensation, he's feeling it. Feel the muscle, understand it, right? It's that, it's that connection there. Because a lot of people do it and they're just fucking compensating. They're using other fucking muscles, they're using their lat and shit like. Prioritize the stabilizer muscle. Don't worry about load here, worry about feeling it. Right. Oh shit, that was and good. And nailing it. Oh. How'd that feel? Fucking hard. On fire, that's it. Quality, it's gonna, be, it's gonna kill it. Um, uh, one more set, and then we'll go for a run. Anywhere more force, right? So you get results. Oh. Yeah, you leak, oh. you can't produce much force. I've warmed up. Let's go to the conditioning, um, uh, conditioning component. We're gonna hit some tempos. I'm not gonna go 100% because my string. I'm gonna build up, see how I go. Dirk, are we on or not? I don't know if you know, Dirk. Do you understand the employee-employer relationship? I don't know if you know that. <laughs> fucking fuck. 
Now, the reason why I need Dirk is because he's my coach and I want him to fucking oversee this bad boy. So we've got tempo runs here. So it's important to have a bit of repeatability. Like when we want to push that little bit harder, have that little bit of grit, we're starting to tap into the anaerobic system. Now understand with energy system development, okay? You're going to use all systems, right? There's never one. You got the ATP PC, right? You got the anaerobic and you got the aerobic system, right? Again, it breaks down a little bit more complex, but just for my sim simplistic sake, that's, that's a good understanding, okay? When we want to push that little bit harder, hit the finish line, or work at a higher intensity past someone, we tap into a bit more of an anaerobic contribution. But because when we do that, we also get a bit more of what we call um, lactate and hydrogen ion accumulation, which means there's more fatigue. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm making sure Wood can hit some top, top, higher intensity efforts so that he doesn't break down when he does those things. Because again, he's gonna have to pass people, he's gonna have to do some extra work, maybe he goes up a hill. These type of things is important. Oh, it's on a track. But anyway, okay, <laughs> he's gonna have to pass some people, he's gonna go around the corner, he's gonna go bend, whatever it be, right? That's just an example of what we're doing here is we're trying to expose him to a couple anaerobic efforts to ensure he can create that repeatability with his capacity and therefore they mold together. All right, here you go, boy. All right, you ready? You got your timer? Go. So I think when people look at hamstring strains, look like, again, it wasn't the ideal scenario, but again, it's okay to have a bit of awareness and push. I think a lot of people get scared and rest. A lot of people get scared when they get a hamstring strain or get a little injury to rest completely or not load it at all. I think it's important to understand after with a grade one hamstring strain or strain in general, after four days, a lot of the main healing inflammation kind of drops off and you can start to begin gradually loading it again. We're now approximately a week and a half post it. We're, I think we're just trying to reintroduce this intensity. He's working at probably 80% and he's still bringing a good intensity and he only has a little bit of awareness. So in my opinion, pushing with a little bit of awareness is okay as long as you don't exceed right. that just, three, four, wrong, five so out of 10 pain. Yeah. Definitely recovering quicker. Like my resting heart rate has definitely dropped. I feel it and I recover between efforts. So I'm not saying this is a maximum effort or anything, but there's my car in there, big service. So on the last rep there, we actually focused on bringing the, a bit more of knee drive into it. So bringing that knee up, punching that knee up and punching it back down. So when we do that, we're less likely to overstride or leave our leg hanging out the back and then overswing and therefore kind of revolve into this over excessive cycling and more into a nicer uh, cyclical action, okay? So driving that knee sometimes can be helpful. Doing it all the time or over exaggerating maybe isn't useful, but just driving it a little bit is effective to kind of prevent, again, leaving your leg swooping at the back or, you know, leaving your leg too far in front, creating a really nice effective knee drive. That's what we're kind of focusing on now. I'm trying to work on more front side mechanics, more high knee lift, trying to get my knee up, but applying more force down back around. I think one foot, the switching's gonna be quick between the legs, but also flexed ankle, one leg pushing the ground, the leg driving up, and we're switching quicker. I don't wanna be too far at the back, backside. Very Fuck, it's actually freezing. You're in shorts and he's in pants. I shave my legs specifically for running. Look, aerodynamic. Because we uh, have torn his hamstring, we're looking at the one percenters right now. So every little one percent matters. Shoes, aerodynamic, looks, which, uh, but let's not talk about that. Just any little bit, because again, like fucking James Clear, Atomic Habits said it best. One percent is, is what makes you win, bro. Queensland, all that shit, sun and shit, bro. Look at Melbourne right now. Moravian's the strength capital, performance capital. It's, it's the grind capital. Look at that, look at that, look, 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 look. Grinding, bro. They're gr <laughs> bro, we're grinding in Moravian. It's fucked. It's wild, man. Like you enter, like the moment you go from Cheltenham, bang, oh, you're fucking grinding. It's it's ridiculous. You don't even need a coffee. You enter this this uh, this suburb. Our guys, I recommend. You ever need motivation? Get here, bro. We're grinding 24/7.